Yo, what's the deal guys? How are we doing today? My name is Joshua Lopez and I'm here to help you grow and elevate your live stream and gaming experience. So if you're new to the whole live stream and gaming or you've been doing it for quite some time but want to level up, make sure to hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on any of the valuable content that's coming up ahead. Also, if you have questions about this video or any previous videos, make sure to hit me up on Twitch. I do stream pretty regularly, so uh, hit me up there, ask questions, and uh, let's talk. So before we get into any of the parts and the benchmarks and everything that has to do with this build, I want to talk to you about the mindset around it. So you can build a PC many ways. You can go strictly performance and you can go strictly um, aesthetics. So with this build, I wanted to keep a balance. I want it to be very good when it comes to streaming and gaming, but at the same time, I wanted it to look beautiful. So I pretty much balanced both of those two. So this PC build came out to $1,250. And I know the title says 1200, but the $50 came from the Elite case. If that's kind of something that you want to just stay at that 1200, you can go and opt for the NZXT H510, the base model case. So to make sure that we're in the budget of that $1,200, we had to pick the right component. So the first thing is going to be the CPU. We ended up going with the Ryzen 5 3600. This only costs $200. It is a six core 12 thread processor that you can also overclock. It does come with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. But if you want to do any heavy overclocking to it, I'd recommend getting a little bit of a better cooler. This CPU has a max frequency of 4.2 gigahertz, a game cache of 35 megabits, a TDP of 65 watts, PCI version 4.0, and it is unlocked for overclocking. This is third gen Ryzen. AMD has been killing it. So when it comes to the price to performance, it was a no brainer. For the motherboard, we ended up going with an ASRock B450 Steel Legend. Now this motherboard is white and matches aesthetically perfect. And the RGB is very, very vibrant. And that's one of the main things. We want to make sure it pops. And this RGB is beautiful. Again, this is a B450. It is compatible with Ryzen 3rd Gen. But if you choose a B450 and not a B550 or an X570, you need to make sure to update that BIOS because 3rd Gen Ryzen runs on a completely different BIOS. But again, this B450 comes ready for 3rd Gen Ryzen, so you're not going to have to do any type of BIOS updates to it. So we know that Ryzen loves fast RAM, so that's why we went with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Neo in 36 megahertz. This RAM is freaking beautiful. It's slick, it's sexy, and the RGB shines nice. I personally have this RAM on my PC and I love looking at it. So this is kind of where we get into the upper bracket of price for performance and the aesthetics. So for memory, we went with two things. We have a 500 gigabyte SN750 WD Black NVMe. We have this because we want to install Windows to it. We want to have all main applications. And this is what's going to make the PC feel very responsive and very fast. As far as extra storage, we want two terabytes of Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Put all your other games, all your other programs into that, and you'll be perfectly fine. And as far as the case, we want the H510 NZXT Elite, and it's sexy. It has front glass in the front, has a side glass on the side. It's got a nice tint to it, so the RGB doesn't go all over the place. So if you're trying to take a picture, you'll get it really nice. Plus, the minimal design to it makes it stand out even more. I live on the philosophy of less is more, and this case speaks volume. Now, if you want to stay on that strict $1,200 budget, I would recommend the NZXT H510, just the standard base model. But if you have that extra cash, get this case because it is nice. And all right, guys, the main thing to this PC build is the graphics card, because that is what we're going to be pushing. It's what we're going to be using when we're doing all of our gaming and streaming. We ended up going with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. This is a Founders Edition, and honestly, I love how they look. The nice green and silver on the card is very nice and elegant, and I felt like this is going to be a perfect aesthetic look 
with the H510 Elite. Trying to keep that minimalist style, I didn't want to go with too big of a card like a 3 fan by Gigabyte or something like that. And I didn't want it to be a black card either. So going with this card made the aesthetics even better. And last but not least, we went with a 650 watt 80 plus bronze certified Corsair power supply. It's going to be more than enough to power this system and do everything it needs properly. So now that we got all the parts out of the way, let's talk about the performance on how it really worked. So what I did was something a little bit unique and something different. So I want to explain myself when it comes to the benchmarks. I did a handful of titles and I did both gameplay and I both did gameplay while streaming just so that you can have both those options to see what this computer can do. For the majority of the tests, I ran them on max settings 1080p. And as far as streaming, we used the NVENC encoder within the graphics card and ran the stream at 60 frames per second. So for the benchmarks, I wanted to provide you the most realistic numbers possible, and that's gameplay. So within each game, like for example, Valorant, when I started the actual game, I would start the benchmark. And when the game ended, I would end the benchmark. I didn't do any loading screens, any menu screens, or anything like that because we all know that those numbers can skew. So again, Apex Legends, right when I'm in that helicopter about to jump, I'll hit start. And when our team dies, I hit end. That way it's showing you numbers in a full game, something that you would experience. And if you have any questions about the benchmarks and the process, make sure to hit me up in the comments. So let's take a look at these numbers and see what this PC can do. There you have it guys. This PC is a beast. It's elite. It performs if you're just gaming by yourself. It performs if you're gaming while streaming. It's more than capable for all of that. It's a great PC. Now let me know, is this something that you would put together? Would you change a couple things? Did you like the benchmarks? Do you think the numbers were high? Did you think they were low? What would you change about this? Let me know down below in the comments and if you like this video make sure to stick around and hit that subscribe so we can grow together and remember catch me on twitch if you have any questions and in the meantime you guys game up